YouTube, how's it going? The Goat House is back with another NFL free agency video. I got my top 25 free agents for this 2020 NFL free agency. We're going to go from 1 to 25 in this video and break it down. A lot of good free agents here. More quarterbacks than we're used to and some solid pass rushers I noticed as well. Uh, we'll get to the video in just a second, but first, we have two channels. A new channel, the Goat House Plus. There's a link down in the description and the comments for that new channel. Please subscribe to both. We're trying to match the subscribers up. And then we have a Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon. You'll find the links down below. Uh, bringing that Instagram back recently. And on Twitter, we're answering questions and talking football every single day, so it's a must-follow. You will find those links down below in the description in the comments. We'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe and Check those pages out, but let's start at the top. I mean, number one for me is a no-brainer. It's Dak Prescott, and it is tough because, yeah, I, you know, chances are he's back on the Cowboys. You know, very, very high chances, uh, and they're they're sitting in an interesting you know situation because, you know, they may have to slap the franchise tag on him, which isn't the worst thing in the world. I mean, they can just extend. They have a whole another year to extend him then uh, after this year. Um, or they can sign him, which isn't the worst deal at all, at all either. You know, 26 years old, and that's why he's number one. He, he's a he's a solid quarterback, a quarterback on the rise, and he's only 26 years old. We're talking about, you know, quarterbacks in their prime. Man, I mean, it's a pretty big range, but it starts in the 30s to me, or maybe 29 to that 35 range, really, for the good quarterback. So he's still not, you know, ready to be in his prime yet. So he can get there. You know, he is the top free agent target. You know, any team that even maybe needs a quarterback, would love to have him. Uh, you know, I'd say, I wouldn't say 0% chance he goes elsewhere because there's that chance where, uh, you know, they kind of bypass the franchise tag period because they think they can sign him and nothing gets done and some other team could kind of sneak in there. But it's very little chance that he goes elsewhere. But I wouldn't say 0% chance, but it's pretty damn close to that. But to me, because of his age, because he's not in his prime, he's quarterback on the rise that's why he's number one. That's why he's number one. And if he ends up being the highest paid quarterback in the NFL after this free agency, everyone will overreact. But it's not a big deal to me because it's it's basically a future contract. And, and you know, next year somebody else will get paid higher. The next year somebody else will get paid higher. Maybe a couple guys will. That's just how it works. Number two to me is Chris Jones, defense lineman from the Chiefs. Uh, to me, an elite defensive lineman, interior defensive lineman. Really could play. He could play 3-4 end or he can play 4-3 defensive tackle and he's proven that because he's played in both these last two years and played an elite level um, this guy's gonna get paid he wants around 20 million per year you know a little more than that maybe looking at what Aaron Donald got and he's not he's right there with Aaron Donald in my opinion he's right there with him you know Aaron Donald's a little freakier but to me he's right there uh you know I think you take him away from the Chiefs you know that it's a different team you know you can't say that the Chiefs aren't an elite team you know without him but it just feels like a totally different team. He makes that much of an impact. Um, you know, there's a rare, a limited amount of interior defense linemen that can get pressure uh, and stop the run. You know, stop the run first. That's what these guys are there for. But get quarterback pressure next. And that's kind of the key, you know, in the passing league. You know, getting interior pressure is very, very important. I think it's underrated at this point. Uh, so he instantly makes some of these teams a lot better, that much better where he's ranked ahead of actual pass rushers and quarterbacks here and we see Tom Brady at three see Tom Brady take a step down a little bit this year uh, but probably his worst offense line and, and worst weapons uh, of his career there uh, in New England uh, you know at least for the last you know decade at least so but I, I still think he can win you cannot doubt Tom Brady I think if he goes to the right team or even the Patriots that team has a chance you know that team has a chance unless it's like a you know, a team that's really early in the rebuild process, which is that that's not going to happen. So to me, I've been seeing all kinds of crazy uh, projections. You know, he might get this many years with this much money. I wouldn't sign him to a lengthy deal, um, but he instantly makes you a, for the most part, most teams, a Super Bowl contender. And, you know, at first it was like, he's not going to leave New England. He's going to stay. And now all of a sudden it's starting to heat up that he could go elsewhere. You know, we'll have our predictions when the time is right, but it's still hard to see him anywhere else with the Patriots, but it's starting to sound realistic. And any of those teams that I think he would consider, I think they instantly become a contender. And even though he's, you know, up there in age, you know, 42 or so, um, you know, he, to me, he's still that good. He's still number three. Jadeveon Clowney at number four. The only concern about Clowney was how much money he wants compared to the, his production. You know, people aren't happy with the amount of sacks he gets every year, but that's kind of where stats are overrated. You know, Clowney is a ball player. He's still very young. 
Uh, he can do he can do several things. You know, he can play four three end. He can play three four outside linebacker. He can drop back. Um, he's always facing double teams. He's gonna stop the run first too. That's another thing about him. Um, you know, I wouldn't put it past him to play a three four end too. Not, not that's a, that's a possibility or would happen. But uh, yeah, to me, he's still a top player. You know, I don't really care how many sacks he has compared to some other guys. Uh, it's just the question is the money. How much money does he want? Um, and and has, it, has it come down since you know he was on the Texans? Another thing that's interesting is that some teams actually may not value him maybe as high as I do. Um, and maybe that's because of the sacks. And why I say that is because what the Seahawks traded to get him. They traded him next to nothing. You know, a third-round pick among some below-average players perhaps. A uh, third-round pick along with those players. You know, it, it's basically nothing. So that tells me well, – that, what, what that tells me is the Seahawks offered the most, you know. And there's several other teams that you would think that would want Clowney services that didn't offer that amount. So that that's a little concerning. You know, maybe there's not a whole bunch of interest. What I will say, uh, there's teams within the division of the Houston Texans that there was no way he was going to get traded to because they weren't going to trade him to a division rival. Um, so those teams are kind of those sneaky teams that actually ha- may have the high interest because we just don't know about yet because they weren't able to trade for them. They may not even call because you know damn well the Texans aren't going to trade uh, them to, you know, if you're the Titans, you're the Jaguars, you're the Colts. Y- I mean, you know the Texans aren't going to trade them to you. So that that those are some sneaky teams to watch out for. Um, but the Seahawks very well can get him back. I'm sure they like him. He made more of an impact. The stats will show. Anthony Costanzo at five, the tackle from the Colts. Uh, I mean, I haven't really looked at too many other free agent rankings, you know, some here and there, but I feel like I may be higher on Costanzo than everyone else. I mean, when – it's rare that you see a quality, a very you know good tackle uh, become available in free agency. You know it's one of the more valuable positions. You see tackles, really linemen in general, but tackles never get traded because as soon as you trade your guy, you have a hole, and there's a high demand for them. There's a limited amount, and you and teams always make sure they extend them before free agency. So it's rare that you get this. Uh, instance here and that's why and it's so important I mean there's so many teams that they have so much talent and they make the playoffs because they have talent but then um, you know they just don't have the offensive line to make that next step I feel like there's so many teams like that and and this is their chance here if they have the cap space you know the Colts good news for the Colts they want them back is they have um, you know there's there's several good things here for the Colts they have a bunch of cap space uh, to get him back, I mean, they could use the franchise tag on him. Uh, but even if they, you know, even though he's a big time free agent, and it's, um, I think, in their best interest to get him back, it's not the end of the world for the Colts because uh, I think whoever they replace, I still think it'll be a good offensive line, you know, because the rest of the unit's really good. So for the Colts' sake, it's not the worst situation to be in here. Um, but some teams are going to be going, going for this guy. You know, he, he what is he, thirty one years old? Yeah, I think that's about prime for offensive line. We see we see offensive line play at a high level. You know, it's a little older than what you want maybe, but we see offensive line play at a high level still around that age. So I think it's a rare instance really. And uh, teams, you know, there's some teams that take a big step up. You know, their stock goes up getting a guy like this. It's pretty crazy. Uh, we're looking at the next group of free agents. Derrick Henry's a tough one because where do you value the running back position? Uh, and people really don't, but at the same time, you know, if you're able to get your hands on a top tier, arguably the best running back in football, you know a guy that even though Titans had a pretty good team, you know he kind of carried the team at times. So imagine, you know, I think he kind of made Tannehill look better, even though he's a solid quarterback. You know, imagine him with a a really good quarterback. You know, I mean, it, they can be become so unpredictable and it's really hard to game plan against them. You know, so when does a top tier running back like this become available? Uh, yeah, the reason he's not like top five is because. I guess the value of the position really isn't there, but a dominant player at any time could be the best running back in football. Ark Armstead, defense lineman from the Niners. What I like about him is he can play DN and he can kind of slide in and play inside. Um, he's going to get pressure on the quarterback, had a career year. I, I guess the negative would be there's not a whole bunch of, um, you know, proof of good play. You know, is, is he 100% proven? It's hard to say 100%, but he had a damn good year, a very good season. Uh, teams are going to be desperate even now more than ever for these, the, the pressure on the D-line after seeing what the Niners did. They pretty much made it there because they're a very balanced team, very good team, but the main thing is they were so dominant, not just at the end position, but in interior D-line as well. So teams are going to be spending a lot of money for this. 
Um, you know, the other question is because there was so much good talent around him, uh, you know, how will he be on other teams? So there are some questions, but uh, it's a guy on the rise, a player on the rise, still young. You know, I, you know he's going to make a team better. Uh, Shaq Barrett, number eight. The question with him is, you know, is he a one-year wonder? I really don't think so, but it's always in the back of people's minds. He's had one really good year, but he, this was the kind of the year he got the most opportunity. Kind of was more of a rotation guy in the Broncos. Probably should have played even more, even if he was a rotation guy. Um, you know, the Bucks made it clear they really want him back. But what's the, you know, some team's going to come along and pay him you know, maybe the top tier pass rush money because teams know if you don't have an elite quarterback, it's tough to win the Super Bowl. But the next step is to get that elite pass rush and teams will be the teams that really don't have the opportunity to get that elite quarterback. They like their quarterback. They don't have the opportunity to get that elite one because they're very, very rare. They're going to go for that pass rush, you know, and teams could always make the pass rush better. You know, even if you feel like your pass rush is good, teams could always make it better. A year like Shaq Barrett had, teams are going to be throwing money at him. Um, and you know, the only reason he's, maybe he's not in the top five is because yeah, you know, could it be, you know, just maybe he's a really good fit with the bucks. You know, they kind of had a hybrid defense, change it to more of a three, four look, uh, or was he a one year wonder? So, uh, some concerns. I'm not really concerned though. I like him a lot. Uh, we have a safety at number nine. Anthony Harris had a career year, maybe the best playmaker, uh, defensive back this year did a very good job, you know, kind of playing that center field r- role and reading the quarterback's eyes, you know, wherever he went to take care of that, to, to take away that ball. Um, uh, and he's, you know, a perfect example of a guy getting better and better, you know, each step of the way was undrafted from Virginia and just every step of the way has gotten a lot better. Um, there's a couple teams, uh, out there that really need safeties, and the safety class really isn't that special in the draft. So they're going to be throwing money, uh, if not franchise tag, at a guy like Anthony Harris. Uh, he's a game changer. You know, he's going to get his hands on the ball. That I mean, that can help a team win multiple games. Really, uh, Teddy Bridgewater, number ten. Um, you know, still still a young quarterback, and I, I think he proved a lot this year. You know, the questions were, um, you know, can he? Really stay healthy was number one, and you know, can he, you know, continue? Can he win games? You know, multiple games, and uh, and he did a great job of the Saints. You know, uh, filling in for Drew Brees. You know, he almost looked. You know, he's not Drew Brees, but he almost looked just as good as him. Uh, but he's got a future. You know, I think. You know, I was super high on him out of Louisville. The injury. You know, he looked good early in the career. Injury kind of set him back a little bit. Um, but I still think he has. You know, he he has potential. I think he's going to get there, uh, and I think he. Really, in my opinion, I've said this before, I think he really should be the choice for the Saints because uh, he's proven it to them and he has more of a future. You know, if not going the Teddy Bridgewater route, you may hurt your future. And I guess that future part's the key word and why he's number 10 here and why he's ahead of uh, some of the other quarterbacks, you know, in my opinion here. Uh, next group of free agents, I got Byron Jones, the Cowboys corner at number 11, uh, a corner that. To me, also has potential. He can get better because he was a former safety, switched the corner, um, you know, just a couple years ago, and was lights out. You know, I think a lockdown corner, uh, very athletic. And with all that being said, I think he can get better. Still a young corner, and um, you know, I guess rare to see these types of guys in free agency. He's gonna get paid a lot of money. You know, I still I think there's a chance he may get a little more than he should get because I don't know about I don't corners a very hard position to play. I don't know how I'd value it in today's NFL. You know, it's pretty much. You just go get the fast guys at corner because it's hard to keep up with some of these offenses. Today's NFL, um, you know, I think the pass rush, um, you know, is just so much more of the key, so much more value there. So I don't want teams to overspend on corners, uh, but Byron Jones is a really good one that could get better. Yannick Ngakwe, the pass rusher from the Jaguars, um, you know, pass rush. I talked about it. teams are really going to be desperate for pass rush, even if they're already good at the pass rush position. They want to be great. Everybody wants to be elite at the pass rush position. It's easier to do that than to go be elite at quarterback or offense line. To me, the most important things in football, specifically quarterback, offense line, edge rush, or D line, pass rush in general. Uh, so teams will throw money at him. I'm worried he may get paid a little more uh, than he should, but. Again, because teams are desperate as they should be, it's okay if they overpay a little bit for the pass rushers. Um, a very freakish talent, a good talent. You know, it's another one of those guys where, you know, is he one hundred percent proven? You know, he kind of came out of nowhere. He's had some good years. Um, you know, I'm not trying to say he's unproven, but you know, it's it's not a guy that you know I'm going to guarantee he's going to have a lights out season every single season. You know, he's not one of those guys. So, um, but a very good pass rusher, so important. Uh, Drew Brees at 13, tough to rank Drew Brees, and I had Teddy Bridgewater ahead of him because, um, you know, you know, free agency. You're kind of just signing for yeah this year, but the future as well. 
Um, you know, I, I think they should go the Teddy Bridgewater route. Another reason, you know, maybe why Drew Brees is down at 13 is because, you know, it's either retire or the Saints. So that doesn't make him that appealing of a free agent. You know, I, I don't, he's not going to go anywhere else. If he were going to go everywhere, anywhere else, you know, Patriots, Chargers, it's never going to happen. But I think you'd instantly make those teams contenders. So he is obviously very good. Um, but it's just tough to rank him. I, you know, I slid him down because it's probably a one-year thing or retire, and it's not going to be on any any other team besides the Saints. But you know, if he did go somewhere else, you know, he would definitely help them. Dante Fowler at fourteen. I loved his season this year. Loved it. Uh, I, I think you know, pretty productive stats-wise. But I think more, pretty, you know, more of an impact in the stats show. Constantly getting pressure. It's pretty much him and Aaron Donald up to them to get pressure. Uh, and, and Fowler did a really good job. And he's still young. Um, you know, still young. I guess. Kind of like Ngakwe and then both Jaguars, or at least former Jaguars, uh, actually, you know, maybe not 100% proven because he's had the years where he disappeared. And, and, you know, maybe he's only good on that Rams team with Aaron Donald, but I like him. I think he'd be a good signing for uh, plenty of 3 4 teams. I like him at 3 4 outside linebacker. Another young safety, Justin Simmons, uh, had a big time year this year. He's always been good, but this kind of was like the first, like, really big year. Um, you know, I, I don't. I see small chances he's outside of Denver after that. You know, it, it, I, I don't think he's leaving there. Is what I'm what, what I'm getting to here. Um, but a big time playmaking safety, uh, and uh, you know, like I said, there's some teams out there that need safeties pretty bad, and really, you know, looking at the draft, you're only you know quality starters, day one starters. You, there may only two teams may get that. You know, only two teams from the draft. Um, so teams may be desperate for that position as well. Uh, it's almost, you know, corner versus safety. Like it wasn't even, you know, it wasn't even close which one was more valuable. But now I think it's starting to flip. You know, I really, I really think so. You see these, you know, top tier safeties make such an impact. You know, corners so much of a harder position to play. Uh, but some of these safeties I think make more of an impact than the corners do. Uh, but yeah, Justin Simmons another good one. Uh, next group of free agents, Joe Tooney from the Patriots, a guard, uh, a guy that's you know going to stay healthy, going to uh, you know protect the quarterback, and obviously be a run blocker first. So uh, there's there's teams that want to build that offense line and make that next step. So that'll be an appealing one there for Tooney. Uh, the, it's weird because guards, I think, are becoming more and more valuable. They used to never be valuable, and they never really got paid anything. We'll see if that kind of shifts this year. I'm still kind of waiting for that, as it should. Um, but I got him. I got him at 16. That'd be a big time signing for anybody, really. Um, you, even though it's a guard position, you know, not the I guess not the most appealing position, but it would be big time. Uh, 17, Amari Cooper. Uh, yeah, people may have expected him higher. For, you know, I got him down at 17. Why? Amari Cooper is a great talent. He's still very, very young, uh, but a, a, a top tier talent, really, with a lot of potential. But you know, it's with this draft class, with this wide receiver draft class, um, you know, the most elite at the top and the deepest of all time, both, um, you know, I would almost, I'm not saying the Cowboys shouldn't re-sign Amari Cooper, but just comparing the prices and the talent level, even though these rookie receivers aren't really proven yet, the talent level to me is not far off. I think there's actually receivers in this draft uh, that could be very, that could actually be better than Cooper, and that's just saying how good the class is early on in their career. Uh, and then just look at the difference in prices. You know, you're gonna have to spend a lot of money for Cooper, and it's not really a good year for free agent receivers. Uh, the other thing I don't like is him coming in and out of games a lot with nagging injuries. Um, but again, a very talented guy. I, I'm just not gonna put him high in these rankings. You know, he's not like a top tier priority in my opinion uh, when it comes to signing some of these some of these free agents. He is young. He's very talented though. Uh, Brandon Scherf, another top tier guard to hit free agency here. Not the most, not the most appealing signing, I guess, if you get him, but it, it's an impact one. It's big, and we see two quarterbacks, Ryan Tannehill uh, and Jameis Winston. I think both risky because Tannehill's only had one good year, and it wasn't even a full year. Is he only good because uh, the uh, dominant running game kind of opened things up, or the play calling was great? You know, what's the reason he looked really good? Um, you know, so I mean, is he a one year wonder? Some some questions there, and Jameis Winston has that big play potential. Big playability, but he, you know, he turns the ball over way too much. I, you know, he's not going to throw thirty turn interceptions this year. I, I, I can almost guarantee that he's not going to do that again. It's going to be much less. Uh, but he will turn the ball over. I, I think if the team does it right, whether it's the Bucks or you know they, somebody else, they do off season right, they could be very good with him. But kind of what's the ceiling with him? I don't think he can be consistent. I think he can make it to the playoffs easily. I think he can win a playoff game. You know, it depends on the team. 
Um, but you know, so as soon as you get in the playoffs, you have to be consistently good every single week. You cannot slip up. That will be the difference, and, and that's kind of what I worry about. Winston, you know, you, that's the tough part because I, I like Jameis. You know, I like his mentality. He, he doesn't want to give up. He 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 always thinks he can make make the throws, uh, and that's kind of a bad thing at times. But it, it's a, it's a light to me. It's a likable guy, even though if there's a lot of people that probably that don't like him out there. Um, you know, a likable football player, I should say. So I like him. I think he should be in the heads of some teams, you know, when it comes to maybe their, their next quarterback. Um, but at the same time, do you throw a lot of money at a guy that, you know, what is his Super Bowl chances? Because the goal is to win the Super Bowl. You know, I think he can get, there's some teams out there that can get that he can get pretty far. But it's just, you know, do you throw money at just. You know, it's just somebody that's just gonna, you know, help you, but not help you enough. I, I guess is is the question there. But I do like Winston. Um, you know, I probably like him better than number twenty on certain teams, uh, and we'll see where he ends up. But it's a tough one. And then the final page of uh, players here: Shelby Harris at twenty one. Uh, he's always been solid, but another, you know, another you know, a couple of Broncos we talk about here in, here in a second. We already talked about one, too. But another guy that kind of had his career year, his best year this year. Got a lot of pressure on the quarterback. That's what I like because he's a run stopper first. So it kind of brings that extra uh, extra play there. Um, so, yeah, what are you going to get from him? You know, because sometimes, you know, in the past kind of disappears that time. But he was also part of a good rotation. But I like Shelby Harris. I think teams will be looking for his, uh, you know, talent so he could get paid. Corey Littleton, inside linebacker, not the most – valuable position in football so maybe that's why he's down here but a very good young talent getting better and better each year can stop the run can cover another linebacker Kyle Van Noy another tough one because I feel like you know he's a very good linebacker he pretty much does it all and at times I feel like he's kind of the glue of the Patriots defense like he's one of the more important players and that kind of goes unnoticed um but that kind of brings up uh you know will he be like that on other teams you know it's can we see that Patriots effect sometimes so kind of a risky one if you're going to pay a lot of money um, so we'll see there. Austin Eckler, the running back from the Chargers, uh, who I think just one of those guys that fits today's NFL perfectly. These teams that just want to pass, 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 you know, this is that perfect running back for those systems. And really, I thought he was the best playmaker on the Chargers last year. Uh, and he can help some of those teams or, or the Chargers take that next step again, um, you know, because he's still young. He's getting a lot better. And another Broncos uh, player, cornerback, Chris Harris Jr., who has been one of the better corners in football. Um, you know, kind of getting up there in age, you know, again, corner, I, I almost prefer just going cheap, cheap route with the corners, you know, rookies, get, get the, you know, he's got to check out the tape, he's got to be able to play the position, he's got to be able to read, you know, um, you know, you know, quarterbacks, and, but I'm almost going for the cheaper athletic type in today's game, and he's kind of getting up there in age, so that's why maybe he's, you know, his talent is, is says better than number 25, but that's kind of why he's down here. Um, because it's not a guy I'm going to go spend a lot of money on. That's for it's for sure. You know, I don't want. I, I like him. You know, I'd love to have him on my team, but only for the right price. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, there's a lot more good free agents than this. Just want to go over my top 25. And really, it, it's a silly video, honestly. I know it's um, you know it's entertaining. People want to see this, and I enjoy making these types of uh, rankings. But why it's kind of kind of weird is because. Every team's rankings are going to be different as they should. They're looking for the right fits. They're looking for their needs. They're looking for the right price. Um, will this guy, you know, work on our team? You know, so every team's rankings are going to be much, much different. So this is just kind of my view on, uh, you know, t not just the talent level, but kind of the value, the price, and uh, the future kind of comes into play here. So we can talk in the comments about anybody else here uh, or your guys' thoughts. But, uh, yeah, that's going to wrap up this one. Follow our new channel and our Twitter, our Instagram. There's a link in the description in the comments for all that. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for watching this video. That's going to do it for this one. Goodbye.